Ready? <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome to Sussex Music. My name is Neil. I got a very special guest tonight because I know this guy very well. He's in my band, Basement Noise. Say hello to Hank Winston. Hey, folks. We're going to ask him some questions, and he's going to play a song for us. And I'm going to do uh, my best. He'll do his best. That's right. For Neil. That's all you can do. <laughs> all right. First question. Music in general. How did you get into music? Uh, what were your influences? Not playing, but just uh, growing up. Yeah, so I guess um, going all the way back, you know, in elementary school, just obviously just more of like a casual music fan. Whatever, whatever I'm seeing on MTV or hearing on the radio. So at that phase, it's kind of like whatever's just being presented to you. But um, I'd say uh, the summer before seventh grade, when I became obsessed with Kiss, that was like where things just completely changed for me, where I was no longer a casual music fan, but became obsessed with music. Um, you know, really being into full albums instead of just, you know, songs, singles that are being played on the radio, just individual songs by groups, but really being into full albums and being into the band and um, just learning about all the members and everything that comes about. But they were, I think, the that was the group that um, brought me to that next level where music just, I think, became um, really the, the most important influence in my life where I became obsessed with music. So nice. that, that was the earliest point of it. Were you in the KISS Army? Yes. <laughs> well, happy Veterans Day. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that was our I salute all of you. That was our joke. <laughs> Back in the day. And I think so. also being so much into KISS and at that particular time, that um, got me very much into like the whole like metal scene. So metal was a, a very big influence for a long time. So that the next uh, step was like Metallica. Hmm. That was a huge influence on me in high school. But then, um, I mean, there were like a bunch of bands, but then I guess I um, mellowed out a bit in college, and <laughs> then a lot of classic rock stuff became um, more dominant um, as far as what I was listening to, and um, to this day, the Beatles are a huge, huge influence on me. You know, don't think there would ever be a better songwriting team than Lennon and McCartney. And, um, but I think uh, classic rock stuff like the Beatles, the Grateful Dead, Pink Floyd, Neil Young, Rolling Stones, that's probably still um, the uh, like dominant influence, um, but I think all genres of music are um, have their time and place. Mm. Like every single genre of music has both its good and bad. Um, so for me there might be certain genres that have more good than bad. And, for me, other genres that have more bad than good, but I think every single genre's definitely got something to offer. Uh, and I think when we play together, I think we both, I think we both kind of feel that way, and just all everything kind of just comes together. And I don't think we like ignore anything or would reject any kind of style if it feels good, if it feels right, and it's feeling natural to us. I think you know we would go with it. Yeah, 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 I agree with that. Yeah. So when you get the question, uh, Beatles or Stones? You say Beatles. <laughs> Beatles. I used to feel that way, but now I'd say Stones. I don't know why. Stones are amazing. You know? yeah. Can't deny that or can't uh, knock them in any way, and they're a huge, huge influence. But for me, yeah, the Beatles just um, have such a, uh, or have always just had such a huge impact on me. Um, just kind of like everything they did and the progression that they made and their songwriting abilities and the records that they were making and um, just even the influence. Um, that they put on the whole, the world and the existing music scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it always come down to the Beatles for me. Yeah, I find it's always cool when I hear a new Beatles song, well, not a new Beatles <laughs> song, but a song I never heard before, and it's like, wow, yeah. how did I miss that one? Yeah. yeah, the deep cuts. Yeah, yeah. and you mentioned <laughs> Neil Young. I think today's his birthday, actually, isn't it? Is today November 12th? I saw it on Facebook, maybe... November 12th, right? Is it today? Yeah. 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 Wow. wow. All right. Nice. Maybe hey, very nice. A, uh, so this this is actually a very special song. edition then. There you go. We didn't even realize it. <laughs> but yeah, Neil Young, another amazing, amazing musician. He's had like a huge, huge influence on me. His songwriting is amazing. Um, not just like the songs themselves as far as the melody and um, his guitar playing, guitar style, but his lyrics 
are amazing. Um, you know, his lyrics always have had a huge emotional effect on me. I feel like I really relate to everything he says. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, another another huge, huge influence for me. Definitely Neil Young. Yeah, Jay Maskus, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> they, were, they, were they, get Young. they get compared a lot. And, uh, oh, that's all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a great thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> His Dinosaur, uh, Dinosaur Jr. is another amazing band and amazing influence yeah. there as well. Yeah. All right, so uh, growing up, favorite albums? Can't say just one, but can you name a couple of your favorite? So from albums? growing up, yeah, when I was growing up, um, probably if I'm going back to then, um, probably Destroyer by Kiss would be a huge one, and Alive. So Destroyer and Alive by Kiss. If I was going to go to them, um, definitely very very uh, early favorites that kind of. Um, you know, that provided that foundation of uh, what was to come, like things I was going to be into. But then also Billion Dollar Babies by Alice Cooper. That was another big early favorite of mine. Um, I really was into uh, that whole, like, 70s sound for quite a while. Like, um, where nowadays I don't even think it would be, like, it was considered heavy metal in the 70s, but nowadays uh, probably wouldn't. Um, because of what, you know, kind of what that label has kind of went through transformations over over the years. But, um, yeah, initially, like in middle school, I loved that kind of 70s sound of Kiss, Alice Cooper, Aerosmith, Black Sabbath. Now, of course, out of all those bands, Black Sabbath, though, is definitely still considered metal to this day. Yeah. They're like the, you know, um, the fathers of heavy metal, but Black Sabbath, definitely a huge influence. So you could pick any of those albums out as a big favorite from when I was growing up. Uh, Master of Reality is a huge favorite. Um, Sabotage, a lot of people don't mention that one too often, but Sabotage by Black Sabbath is another huge influence. And um, as I mentioned before, that kind of like led for me, like, then I got into Metallica, um, like heavier stuff like thrash metal, speed metal, um, so Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets, those were big favorite albums of mine. Then I became a really huge fan of all things Glenn Danzig with The Misfits, Sam Hain, and then Danzig, so Walk Among Us by The Misfits, that was another big huge one. And um, what was pretty cool is that also when I was in high school, that's where you first started to see a lot of these um, later they would become known as alternative bands, but there really wasn't a, a label yet for them. And it was like, they were playing heavy stuff, they were playing hard stuff, but it definitely wasn't, they weren't straightforward metal bands, but there was Jane's Addiction and Faith No More, mm -hmm. Soundgarden, Primus. Um, I really got very big into that whole scene. And um, so like Nothing Shocking by Jane's Addiction, The Real Thing by Faith No More. Those were also very big favorites of mm. mine when I was in high school. Nice. Yeah. So your um, most memorable concert, not as you playing, but just going to concerts, yeah. were one of them, because there's probably so many. Right? Yeah, hmm. that's definitely, yeah, uh, that's an interesting one to, to hmm. I mean, going to see Kiss in uh, Madison Square Garden in December of 1985, that definitely comes to my mind right away because it was the first concert I ever went to. So that was just a whole new experience. Like actually being like in an arena, seeing, um, here they are, I've always just seen them on TV. There they are up on the stage. It was like a whole, um, you know, new experience that I was really into. And so that always um, stands out to me. Of course, seeing the very first KISS concert. But um, The Grateful Dead, you know, amazing live band. They were born to be a live band. All the uh, improv that they do, the way they feed off one another, which became a very, very huge musical influence on me. The way you can just kind of get on stage and let's just see where it goes. You know, it doesn't have to be planned out. We don't need a plan. We don't have to follow a certain structure. Let's see where it goes. And they were able to connect with one, one another and um, feed off one another, and that was always very impressive to me. Nice. Yeah. 
All right, now on to you. How did you mm. get into uh, picking up a guitar and playing? Because mm -hmm. you had a guitar when I met you, but you said you... Yeah, well, yeah, it was kind of interesting because, uh, yeah, I first made the attempt when um, when I was young because of how much, you know, music had such an influence on me and I obviously then wanted to be a part of that and play guitar and play music. But um, when I first picked up the guitar, it didn't go so well. I didn't really, like, <laughs> I didn't seem to get the hang of it. Uh, so this was when I was in the eighth grade. So when I was in the eighth grade, I made the attempt, and I was trying to. Um, it didn't go so well. I got discouraged, I guess, maybe too easily. <laughs> and it was, so it wasn't until um, way later on down the line in my life where then you were bringing it up. Because, you know, you, which is a good thing, because then I wouldn't be here and playing. I, I wouldn't be playing, probably not. Because then, you know, you, you had the band, you were enclosed, and uh, you were looking for a bass player, and so we were, like, tight friends, so it was like, it seemed like the obvious thing, I should be in the band. We're real tight, I love music, but I had very, very, very limited musical ability, because... I tried the guitar out for just a bit in eighth grade, so I tried to take what I knew from... I tried to take that and then um, picked up the bass and slowly progressed, and so now here I am. <laughs> in basement noise. In basement noise. And, it, and it's funny, because uh, Mud, he, he's the one that had me pick up the guitar. Yeah, so it's all, see, it's Mud, all interconnected. Mud's in noise, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the egg. What do you think about the egg? Recording it, um, playing it now, it's, it's uh, what is it, 11 years old now? <laughs> yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that was a whole amazing, yeah, that was definitely an amazing experience, getting the chance to actually go into a studio. So again, not really, you know, always loving music, but then for a long part of my life, I thought, you know, I was just going to be a fan, like just on that end of it. Um, you know, didn't think that I quite had the, the skill to be able to play it which, um, you know, which was always kind of disappointing. So it was nice then to be at that point where it was like, you know, okay, I'm actually going to be going in and uh, recording an album. We're going to, and these are songs that, that we, we wrote amongst ourselves too. Um, mm -hmm. So that was also something that's like very satisfying to realize that um, you, know, you can have this kind of creative outlet in your life. And uh, being there at the studio was great. It was unusual. You know how we, we did all the uh, instrumental tracks first, right? So that was odd, because we're so used. That's the only thing I ever knew is with us just playing the songs live, and so obviously we're you know obviously the vocals are there, everything's going on at the same time. So that was a little unusual at first. It kind of threw me off where we're just running through, no vocals, just doing uh, the music, and um, but that was cool also because it's just a whole new experience. And then going back afterwards and and laying all the vocals down and um, yeah definitely a great experience and you know very satisfying it's something I didn't think uh, you know would ever be a part of my life so I was glad to to um, to be able to have done something like that and so yeah, I'm very very proud of that album which I think we all are yeah 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 absolutely do you have a, a favorite show that we've played in Space of Noise or a memorable show yeah Bristol um, was it Bristol <laughs> Right. Yeah, that was memorable. <laughs> that was memorable. It, it didn't was, happen. <laughs> <laughs> right, memorable. For, right. Um, I always like playing at the Clash Bar. I thought that was a cool place. Yeah. I always like doing um, those shows. That when we were, um, it was just uh, it was a cool venue to be at. Um, I liked the whole setup of the place and the vibe of the place and um, everything that was kind of going on in there to the the different. Um, punk rock posters that they had framed up on the wall so that there would always be like some kind of cool, obscure, eccentric movie playing on the TVs, whether yeah. it was like some John Waters film or um, or Troll 2 or something very <laughs> weird, you know, which I think added to all that, what your surroundings, that you know, influence and what you're going to do up on stage. And um, I think it brought that eccentricity to uh, the performances that um, that I think we like. So I always liked playing there. Yeah, that was a great place. It closed down, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but I definitely always liked going there and being able to, to do shows there. Yeah, and the first time we played it was with uh, the Silence Kit, Pat 
Pat's band who produced the egg. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So, that was, uh, so again, we see how it's all interconnected. Yeah. <laughs> But if, okay. Yeah, but it's actually aside from that too. Then going outside of, of uh, New Jersey, obviously John and Peter's. Yeah, it's always amazing. Because, December third this year, right? Yeah, we'll be there. Yep. So the annual Christmas show. <laughs> but we never play any Christmas songs. Yeah, but maybe this year. Maybe this year. Yeah. Improv one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but New Hope's an amazing town, anyway. Oh so, yeah. We. So the whole kind of the whole um, atmosphere there. New Hope, John and Peter's. Yeah, it's all great. Yep. All right. Well, we usually ask if you have any tattoos, but I know yeah. you don't. Right. No tattoos. <laughs> not yet. Not as of this this recording. But you never know. Yeah, right? So right. And the night is young. <laughs> <laughs> favorite drink. Oh, favorite drink. Um, alcohol related or just in general? Just in general, whatever you think. Hmm. Um, well, I'll just say Sierra Nevada. Oh, nice. All yeah. right. There's some in the fridge there. Yeah, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. And. Um, yeah, so you're going to play uh, an acoustic song. It's actually one of my favorite songs that you've written. Which I appreciate. Yeah, it's, it's always a, nice to hear. Yeah, it's <laughs> a great song. Yeah, this uh, yeah, this goes quite a ways back. Uh, it was pretty early on once I started attempting songwriting. I think, um, yeah, to kind of look back to where I first came up with this one. And um, actually, wow, it's interesting. I'm trying to pinpoint... The year that it was when I first um, started, when I first wrote this one, I think it was two two thousand nine. Yeah, and it's funny because I I <laughs> right? listen to I yeah. listen to music and I I don't listen necessarily much to vocals. I just listen yeah. to music, so I don't really even know what this song is about. So could you tell oh, us what it's okay. about? Yeah, and I remember you always saying that you did like the little, that kind of uh, yeah, guitar yeah, riff, yeah. kind of, or the, the succession of, of chords there. Um, and actually, so you know what, that's kind of an interesting thing, because that's why I'm thinking back to when it was when I wrote the song. Um, and uh, because actually something that influenced me when I wrote those chords was there's a song called Ruben and Charisse by the Jerry Garcia Band. So um, I was actually listening to that and the chords and that song and that kind of then um, kind of got in my brain and came, came out the way it came out and transferred out onto the guitar, onto the acoustic guitar. But uh, the song itself, so it's called Grasping at Straws. And um, so it's, it's about a failed relationship and the guy, so I guess me, since I'm the one singing it, the guy is singing to um, his ex and is desperately trying to win her back mm. to the point of that he's grasping at straws. So that's where the title comes through. And he's kind of, you know, going through trying to list, uh, like acknowledging all of the, uh, all the tough times and hard times that were there, why the relationship was difficult, but trying to make the case for if you weigh everything out, there was a lot more good. And... Um, you know, and he's saying, you know, it may sound like I'm grasping at straws, but uh, but I'm making a valid point, though, anyway. Mm. Well, I like that. <laughs> so consider that. Now I know. <laughs> so, all right, that's where it all comes from. We're going to hear it. All right. Maybe you can even okay. play that at uh, J&P in a couple of weeks. I hope so. All right. I hope you like it. Thanks, my man. <laughs> hey, always a pleasure. Always. Always a pleasure, Neil. Jam tonight. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Hank Winston. And remember to buy the egg. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can actually still buy it on Amazon. Right, it's there. It's like a CDR. It's, or yeah, something. <laughs> but it's on Spotify. It's on Apple. It's on. All buy it, steal it. Actually, anything you know, use it as a coaster for your drink. There you go. Anything. Yeah. Looney <laughs> Tunes. All right. Here's my man, Hank Winston. All right, so Neil's being kind enough to let, let me showcase one of my songs. This is called Grasping at Straws.
That's how it's done. Welcome nice to job. Sussex County, the place where the dead speak. <laughs> That's right. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hank. Thanks, everyone.